Riddled with graphic sensuality and violence, Saltburn left a serious mark on the 2023 film scene to its very last frame. This is the truth about Saltburn's shocking conclusion, and beware, there are spoilers ahead. Saltburn opens in what appears to be roughly the present day, with Oliver Quick reflecting on his relationship with Felix Catton. The film then flashes back to when the two first met at Oxford in 2006. Like most students at the university, Felix comes from wealth, whereas Oliver is one of the few students there on scholarship. Supposedly, Oliver's alcoholic father has passed away, and Oliver has no interest in coming home to his drug-addicted mother. Feeling bad for his new friend, Felix invites Oliver to spend the summer at Saltburn, his family's lavish estate. At Saltburn, Oliver is introduced to Felix's family, his absent-minded father, Sir James, his snobby mother, Elspeth, and his depressed and bulimic sister, Venetia. Also living at Saltburn is Felix's cousin, Farley Start. Farley is a biracial American who's desperate to cling to his British family status and already has an antagonistic relationship with Oliver at school. Oliver is obsessed with Felix, and when Venetia and Farley both try to make it clear to him that Felix just sees him as a temporary toy to play with, Oliver responds by messing with both of them in perverse ways. In the final act of the film, the Catton family prepares a big birthday bash for Oliver themed around the Midsummer Night Stream. But Felix becomes wise to Oliver's manipulations. The morning before the party, Felix takes Oliver on a surprise visit to Oliver's parents' house. Contrary to Oliver's sob stories, both of his parents are alive, friendly, middle class, and seemingly not addicts. At the party, Felix is put off by Oliver's dishonesty and doesn't want to be anywhere near him. Even so, Oliver tracks him down in Saltburn's labyrinth to declare his love. After the party, Felix's body is found dead in the labyrinth. Sir James and Elspeth try to act like everything's okay, but Venetia and Farley can't keep up the ridiculous facade. Well, you want me just to eat it like nothing's happening? What else is there to do, darling? Anything! After the funeral, Oliver essentially has sex with Felix's grave. Not long after her brother's death, Venetia commits suicide, and while Elspeth wants to keep Oliver around, Sir James wants to pay their guests to leave Saltburn. Years pass, and the film brings us back to the present day. Sir James dies, and an older Oliver reunites with Elspeth. She welcomes him back to Saltburn with open arms, but sure enough, she falls ill and ends up on life support. It's revealed that Oliver's opening narration was being delivered to an incapacitated Elspeth. Oliver confesses that he killed Felix by poisoning his drink before ripping away Elspeth's life support. With the whole cat and family destroyed, Saltburn is now in Oliver's possession. He celebrates by doing cocaine and dancing naked around the building. The premise of Saltburn makes it seem easy to compare it to the recent wave of dark satires about the haves and have-nots, such as Parasite or The Menu. However, Saltburn finds material to laugh about in the eccentric foibles and uncomfortably callous attitudes of the ultra-wealthy Cuttons. Its attitude toward the upper class feels a lot less vicious than other films of this type. The reason for this is largely because its ultimate villain isn't a rich person or a greater systemic force. Instead, it's Oliver, a middle-class interloper. Whatever sympathy Oliver might initially engender as an outsider is lost due to both his twisted actions and lack of psychological relatability. Viewing Saltburn as a commentary on class, the fact that Oliver lies about being poor and struggling when he is really just envious of those who have more than he does might even come across as a reactionary message. Nonetheless, some critics have still described the film as an eat-the-rich movie. The logic here is that even if Oliver comes off as more sociopathic than his wealthy hosts, people can still find enjoyment in seeing him slowly destroy those silly out-of-touch cattons and claim Saltburn for himself. It's important to acknowledge that Saltburn takes place in England, where issues of class are treated differently than they are in America. While American capitalism is based on the idea of the American dream, where anyone from any background can make it big if they work hard enough, British class structures are treated with a much more rigid line between castes. This is particularly visible in institutions like Oxford, where a scholarship students like Oliver completely sticks out. I mean, you're almost passing. For what? I don't know. In that cultural context, it's possible Brits may feel even greater catharsis seeing Oliver find ways to rise above his station, regardless of the twisted methods through which he goes about it. In America, however, stories of people attaining massive amounts of wealth through controversial methods are both common and popular. So this aspect of the film plays a bit more basic and less richly satisfying across the pond. Throughout the film, Saltburn acknowledges this culture clash through the American character of Farley. One of the more complex supporting characters in the film, Farley bullies Oliver 
Oliver to assert his connections to privilege within the British class structure. But Farley's position is very much conditional, and his hyper-privileged family still treats him as an outsider. There's no doubt this is due to his biracial status, for while class hierarchies are slightly less ingrained than the American psyche, racial hierarchies are fixed in place on both sides of the Atlantic. While Saltburn invokes a lot of conversations about social class, the main source of drama in the film is Oliver's feelings for Felix. In the film's opening narration, Oliver claims he loved Felix but wasn't in love with him. Both Oliver and Felix talk of love for each other throughout the film, and at least in Oliver's case, that goes beyond seeing Felix as good friends and into a clear homoerotic sexual fixation. In the end, Oliver declares he actually hated Felix, and that his feelings lies he drove him to wreak havoc on the Cat and Clan. Of course, there's much to debate over what exactly Oliver considers love. He comes across as a complete sociopath, lacking empathy towards others and showing no hesitation about cruelly manipulating the people around him. For this reason, he may be entirely incapable of love as it's traditionally defined. Whether or not his feelings can be accurately called love, however, he's certainly filled with passion and obsession. In addition to the sexual attraction he feels for Felix, much of his desire for his friend is rooted in envy. Oliver wants Felix's social status, wealth, and his effortless ability to charm everyone around him. In the end, Oliver is able to take all of Felix's former belongings for his own, but gaining his victim's personal strengths is another matter entirely. With such a psychologically ambiguous protagonist, Saltburn generally aims to shock and intrigue more than build a deeper connection between the audience and its characters. Even so, there is one scene towards the end of the film that stands out by letting more genuine emotion enter the picture. What's more, the sequence also doubles as the film's most pointed joke about the British upper class. The morning that Felix has been found dead, Sir James and Elspeth still refuse to let go of their pre-existing plans despite their son's death. Gathered at the dining room table, the parents just want to talk about how great Oliver's birthday party was while eating meat pies. In contrast, Farley and Venetia react to the death with actual tears. When Farley tries to talk about how absurd and cruel it is to act as if nothing happened, the parents respond with orders to quietly eat his lunch and not taint the meal with his emotions. None of us wants your bloody American feelings. The parents represent the stoic attitude to keep calm and carry on to a comically unhealthy extreme. Even outside of specific cultural context, this scene hits hard due to the universal struggle to pretend things are normal in the face of tragedy. Given the conscious need to avoid spoilers about the film's many twists, the cast and crew of Saltburn haven't spoken directly about the film's ending as of the end of 2023. However, Emerald Fennell has commented on the general themes of the film, offering some helpful insight into how to process a film's ending in addition to the topic she doesn't outright comment on. When speaking to Vogue, the filmmaker avoided answering questions about the way the film addresses racism, sexism, and classism deeming these political issues secondary to her actual main focus. She explained, Really, it's a film about first love. Generally, because I'm quite facile, I think everything has to do with sex, and I think our fetishization of the country house and titles is completely sadomasochistic. She went on to discuss some of the complexities of humanity that inspired the film, saying, I'm utterly obsessed with how we relate to things that we want and desire and also kind of hate and know are unattainable. Things that we know will never love us back, whether that's a person or a house or a culture. And yet we can't f stop being desperately attracted to them. My question is, why? Imagery over Oliver's climactic A Midsummer Night's Dream birthday party has been present throughout the marketing for Saltburn. So while the dramatic events of the party are still spoiler material, the film's crew has been able to speak about the design elements of the sequence. In the press notes for the film, production designer Susie Davies explained, There were so many design elements that we wanted to bring to the party, elements that needed to feel like they'd been in the family for years. Davies went on to explain the choice to include the fairly out-of-place image of a pig roasting on a spit at the lavish affair, saying, and then to contrast that, we talked about having the slightly grotesque pig on the spit rolling in front of it. It was all about the juxtaposition of the surreal, the sinister, and the colorful. Costume designer Sophie Canali also opened up about Oliver's antlered costume, explaining that it came from a desire to make him look mythical. She also pointed out the contrast between the intensely jeweled designs of Venetia and Elspeth's costumes against Felix's lazier puck costume, saying, You've got everyone else at the party in ball gowns, black tie, fancy dress, or trashy dresses, but Felix is just in his jeans and a vest, and then he's put a pair of wings on and that's all the effort he's gonna make. Speaking in the press notes before the sag after strike, Archie McDequie, who played Farley in the film, described the dramatic effect the party has on the story. He observed, Throughout the film, there's something of a heightened Shakespeare Experience quality to Saltburn and the Catons, and then it all comes to life on this night. 
Another key to understanding Saltburn is its connections to Gothic romance and horror stories. Fennell cited several Gothic novels, like Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca, as influences in the film's press notes. According to The Standard, at screenings of the film, she's gone further in describing the movie's horror as being akin to a vampire flick, saying, Certainly, metaphorically, it is a vampire film. It is about what we do when we're completely besotted with something or someone. And I hope it's part of the classic Gothic tradition where love and hate are very, very close together. While discussing some elements of the film's plot after a screening at the Academy Museum in Los Angeles, Fennell went further into how the vampire metaphor applies to Oliver. According to Deadline, her comments highlighted how Oliver tends to, quote, absorb the qualities of life he desires from those around him the way a vampire sucks a mortal's blood. For their part, the Cattons do the same to other characters in the film. Possibly the clearest example of this behavior is El Pest's conflicting treatment of her troubled friend, Pamela, throughout the film. Pamela died? Yeah. She'd do anything for attention. As reported by Gold Derby, Fennell explained her biggest goal for the film following another awards consideration screening in Los Angeles. Speaking in a Q&A moderated by Variety's Clayton Davis, she said that she wants each person who views the film to feel something about it, even if they don't outright enjoy it, she explained. Hate it, love it, be turned on, be freaked out, whatever it makes you feel. I want people to feel something. That's the reason you make a movie and not a TV show or write a book. Speaking with Movie Maker, Fennell elaborated that the large amount of nudity and sexual scenarios throughout the film were also intended to invoke an unexpected reaction. She explained that the on-screen nudity is about, quote, grief or triumph, as opposed to eroticism. For this reason, the regular sex scenes in the movie are focused mainly on the actors' faces, while the actual nudity comes at more emotionally cathartic points of the film, such as Oliver's behavior at Felix's grave, or his victorious dancing after he claimed Saltburn for his own. Whether Fennel successfully conveyed these ideas to her audience is up to the viewer. But with some of the most shocking scenes and imagery to hit the screen this year, Saltburn is sure to bring about a reaction in just about anyone who puts it on.